Hi, Mike Gaben here with some more KSP math. In the associated tutorial, I looked at how to insert yourself into inclined orbits about Kerbin. In this video, I'm going to look at how to calculate the cost of launching yourself into an inclined orbit. So, without any further delay, let's do the math. My previous math videos were nicely locked down in the solid foundation of Newtonian mechanics, Kepler's laws, and patched conics. This video is going to need to bring in the messy world of aerodynamics, for which there is no perfect solution, just different approximations. What I'm presenting here is what I do, but it is very likely some of you will have different variations on what I present. If so, I would love to hear of them in the comments. For those not interested in the gritty details, I will be presenting a formula towards the end of this video. If that's all you're looking for, just follow the link. With that all out of the way, let's get started. We'll start off by looking at how to calculate the cost of launching into a low, prograde equatorial orbit. This orbit would have an inclination of zero. For worlds without an atmosphere, this was covered in episode 6. Let's apply this technique to Kerbin, for now ignoring that it has an atmosphere. We start by using the Visviva equations to calculate the cost of a Hohmann transfer from a point on Kerbin's equator to low orbit. I'm going to choose 80 kilometers as an altitude for a standard low orbit. You can calculate the additional cost to any other orbit through further applications of the Visviva equations. In our equations, R1 is 600,000 meters, the radius of Kerbin, R2 is 680,000 meters, and mu is the standard gravitational parameter for Kerbin. This gets a delta V1 of 75 meters per second and a delta V2 of 72 meters per second. We then use the orbital velocity formula to calculate what an orbital velocity at Kerbin's surface would be. This gets 2,426 meters per second. We add these three numbers to get 2,573 meters per second. Let's call this value delta VA for the cost of ascent. Now we all know that this is not the cost of getting into LKO. There are two factors I've yet to include. First, Kerbin is rotating at a speed of 175 meters per second at the equator. When launching prograde, this speed works to our benefit and gets subtracted off the cost of our ascent, getting 2,398 meters per second. Finally, we have to take atmospheric drag into account. To actually calculate the contribution of drag requires a lot of variables. Cross-sectional area of the vessel, drag coefficients of radial parts, and angle of attack, to name a few. Even if we had all that, the complexity of the calculations requires the use of differential equations, something that is well beyond the scope of this series. Much better, and what is done by the folks that make delta V maps like this one, is to get the value by experiment. This is where the value 3,400 meters per second comes from. Comparing this to 2,398 meters per second we have thus far, we can see that overcoming atmospheric drag costs us 1,002 meters per second. We'll call this delta VD. For simplicity, let's round this to 1,000 meters per second, and while we're at it, we'll round the delta VA to 2,580 meters per second and VR to 180 meters per second. Okay, we're just about ready, but when we launch into different inclinations, the relative directions of each of these values becomes very important. Let's add on the directions for our equatorial insertion. Now by prograde on the delta VD, I mean the direction of the vector is whatever the direction is that we are flying. In this case, east, but that is about to change. When we add directions to values, we call them vectors, and denote this on the variables by placing arrows above them. This is important because the way in which you do arithmetic with vectors is different. With these vectors, we will be adding and subtracting them, so I need to do a brief aside on how to add and subtract vectors. Thankfully, the idea is pretty simple. When adding two vectors a and b, you simply arrange the vectors so that the second vector begins where the first vector left off. The result of adding two vectors is another vector that runs from the start of the first vector to the end of the second. To subtract two vectors, you simply add the opposite of the second vector. That is, vector a minus vector b equals vector a plus the opposite of vector b. The opposite of vector is just gotten by reversing its direction. 
When we add the two vectors, as we did before, we get the result of the subtraction. Sometimes, to do a more complex problem, you first have to do a simpler problem in a more complex way. Let's re-explore our prograde insertion, this time using vectors. We start by putting in our delta VA of 2580 meters per second east. From this we need to subtract VR, 180 meters per second east, which we accomplish by adding the opposite, which is 180 meters per second west, yielding a result of 2400 meters per second east. We then add on delta VD, 1000 meters per second prograde, which gets our familiar 3400 meters per second for our orbital insertion. Now let's look at a pure retrograde insertion. Now, delta VA is 2580 meters per second west, to which we add the opposite of VR, which is always going to be 180 meters per second west. It's not like the direction of Kerbin's rotation is ever going to change. This yields 2760 meters per second, to which we add delta VD, again 1000 meters per second prograde, yielding a required delta V of 3760 meters per second for a retrograde insertion. With that all down, it's time to step it up. How about a polar insertion where I launch towards the north? Now, delta VA is 2580 meters per second north, to which I add the opposite of VR. Drawing in the result of the addition creates a right triangle, and to figure out the length of this result, we use the Pythagorean theorem. That is, delta VA minus delta VR all squared equals 2580 squared plus 180 squared. Working out the right side and then taking the square root gets a result of 2586 meters per second. Adding on the drag gets 3586 meters per second. We'll step this up one more time. What if I wanted to launch into an inclination of 135 degrees by heading northwest, like I did in the tutorial? Delta VA would be 2580 at a heading of 315 degrees. Adding on the opposite of VR gets this result. This is not a right triangle, so the Pythagorean theorem isn't going to help us. Instead, I'm going to use something called the Law of Cosines. If you have not reached this in your mathematical studies, or have simply forgotten it, I do apologize, but I don't want to turn this into a trigonometry lesson. As such, I will provide a link in the description, and I'll just use the law of cosines without further comment. To use the law of cosines, I need to know the angle between the two vectors I'm adding. This angle is 135 degrees. I'll leave that for you to verify. Using the law of cosines gets that our result squared equals this. Solving gets 2,710 meters per second, and adding on drag gets 3,710 meters per second for the required delta V. Just like the original 3,400 meters per second for an equatorial prograde orbit, all these numbers should be taken as minimums. In practice, adding 5% or so to them would be prudent. Okay, let's make a formula out of this. This will be especially helpful for those that aren't as comfortable with the trig I've used. The law of cosines will work in all situations. The only thing that changes is the angle that we put in the cosine, which will depend upon the desired inclination. Let's represent this angle with the Greek letter theta. We'll simplify this as much as we can by doing the squaring and the multiplying, and then adding the two numbers we squared. We can then take the square root of the whole mess and add on our 1000 meters per second drag factor to get this formula. To calculate the theta, you first need to figure out the heading you want. Theta is then the angle between this heading and due east. You could work out a formula for this if you want, but I would just draw a diagram and figure it out. Let's consider one more example so we can see the formula in action. Let's say I want to launch into an inclination of negative 60 degrees. This means 60 degrees to the south of east. Looking at the diagram, we can see our heading should be 150 degrees, and our angle from east is 60 degrees, which would be our theta. We stuff this in our formula and push through our calculator to get a required delta V of 3,495 meters per second. Adding 5% gets 3,670 meters per second, which is what I would budget for this ascent. This brings this episode to a close. I hope you found it useful, and as always, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.